Chapter 6, Pontificating on Everything. This is my summary of Absolute Power by Paul Collins. To begin with, on the 2nd of March 1939, there was the shortest conclave in modern history. After it began, the next day, Eugenio Pacelli, who was 63 years old, became Pope Pius XII. He spent 12 years as an apostolic nuncio to Germany and visited countries like the United States, Britain, France, Argentina, etc. He descended from the black nobility or Roman nobles loyal to the Pope and he was a priest who had no pastoral experience. As Pope, he appointed Luigi Maglion to become the Secretary of State, but most important decisions were made by himself, such as in dealing with Germany. During his reign, it coincided the beginning of the Second World War, whereby he was unwilling to call out Nazi aggression when they invaded Poland and France, taking on an impartial and neutral stance, but he did call for peace. The Pope allowed these crimes to happen because of his own priorities and responsibilities as head of the Roman Catholic Church. But he was incensed and accomplice to policies he deplored. Jacqui Kornberg, historian The Pope's Dilemma 2015. In 1942, there was a Christmas broadcast whereby the Pope condemned the arbitrary killing of innocent civilians because of their nationality, the use of carpet bombings by the Allies, and the Pope maintained neutrality by condemning travesties made by both sides. Quote, his blindness was not that of willful ignorance. It was the fervently held belief that the mission of universal pastor made him accountable to God for the preservation and salvation of the Catholic Church. Not even the death of millions could be allowed to stand between the Pope and his God-given task. Poor Oshi, historian, a cross too heavy, Eugenio Pacelli, 2011. Oshi believed that the church hierarchy organization was similar to the supreme leader principle, Führer Prinzip, and had the anti-Semitic view of supersessionism, that Christians, not the Jews, are the chosen people. In Italy, 1943, Rome was bombed by the United States Air Force. Mussolini was arrested and overthrown, with the new Italian government negotiating a surrender by July. And the Allies held all of southern Italy by September. The Basilica of San Lorenzo was damaged after Allied attacks on the steel yard and freight yard. 15,000 civilians died. The Pope visited the bomb sites and appealed to both the Allies and Germans to keep fighting out of Rome. Quote, From his conception of Rome as the light and center of civilization and the prestige of the papacy was a dam against encroaching godlessness in the form of national socialism, communism, socialism, and secular liberalism. Kornberg, 2015. Monte Cassino, a Benedictine abbey with a library of archives, was completely obliterated by the Allies. Germans in Rome. After Italy's surrender, Germans occupied Rome in the 10th of September 1943, and a ransom was levied against the Jews, causing the razia, the rounding up of the Jews of the city. 252 of 1,259 Jews were released after being held in the Collegio Militare of the Vatican, and the Pope did nothing. 85% of Italian Jews survived by ordinary Italians who sheltered them in monasteries, converts, and religious houses. The Pope condemned communist partisans in Rome, responsible for killing 335 men in the Ardatine caves and 33 SS troopers. Americans in Rome. Americans came to Rome on the 4th of June 1944. There was negotiation between German ambassador Ernst von Weizsäcker, Churchill, Pius XII, and Roosevelt. Rome was declared an open city, that it was protected from attack because of its historical and cultural value. The Germans accepted this, but the Allies did not initially, since Germany could complete a tactical withdrawal and consolidate their forces. A peaceful handover eventually was carried out due to efforts made by the Pope, according to von Weizsäcker. After the Second World War, the liturgical movement and its revival. German theology focused on mystical aspects of the sacraments. Historical liturgical studies began in the late 19th century and were encouraged by Pius XII. Johann Adam Moller had ideas that included the strong relationship between a living community and the church, represented through Christ's presence. Moller's ideas were adopted by Odo Cassel, German monk in the 20th century who recovered ideas of mysterion, mystery, from Greek Orthodox theology. The mystery of the incarnation of Christ was emphasized, since the body of Christ is the church, and the act of worship allows the church to come into Christ's presence. Theologian Romano Gadini saw the liturgy and worship to be at the heart of Christ's presence. Virgil Michel spread this idea to English speakers through his translation. Christ's presence was connected to responsibility for the world, causing worship to be linked to social justice. These ideas were different from institutionalism, an emphasis on the authority of the church. Pius XII wrote Mystici Corporis on the 29th of June 1943 to confirm Moller's ideas by drawing on the work of Emily Mersch, a Belgian Jesuit who died three years prior in the war. Mersch wrote Theology of the Mystical Body, highlighting Paul's statement against the work of the church tied to the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 30. He desired Catholicism to be a community or juridical oriented and dynamically connected with the presence of Christ. The Vinio 
Aflante Spiritu on the 30th of September 1943. Pius XII wrote this text to show openness towards modern biblical theology despite the modernist controversy. This was the foundation for the modern Catholic biblical movement which underpinned the central study of the Bible in the Vatican II Council later on. Mediator Day on the 20th of November 1947 was written, which praised theological and historical scholarship of the prior century and defined the liturgy as the public worship of Christ that allows the whole community, head and members, to respect God in the mystical body of Jesus Christ. This discussed the connection between public and private prayer and the liturgy. It emphasized papal authority in the liturgy since local adaptations were discouraged and it also changed the fasting rules before communion and introduced evening mass. There were also a use of missals which are translated worship texts to the local vernacular. Pastor Angelicus 1942 was a film about Pius XII's life story, his daily routine and personal holiness. The war wasn't mentioned. It was translated into English in 1946 titled Story of the Pope. The Pope was presented as guiding towards peace and a living saint. This coincided more and more so with the use of electronic media in the 1950s, such as the use of film, radio and television. More documentaries were made about the Pope during this time. In 1950, the Pope proclaimed it to be a holy year, whereby Catholics were invited to pilgrimage to Rome to gain plenary indulgences. According to John Cornwell, attempts to revitalize Catholic spirituality focused on a hybrid of popular piety and the autocracy of the papal office. On the 1st of November 1950, Pius XII declared the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, body and soul, into heaven. This was the first time infallibility in Declaration of Doctrine was used, and it reflects Pius XII's devotion to Mary in Our Lady of Fatima. La Novelle Theologie, the New Theology, was being investigated in 1948 by the Holy Office. It had emerged in the 1930s by Jesuit and Dominican scholars who sought to synthesize culturally relevant theology. It was actually, though, more traditionalistic and built out of the neo-scholastic movement. There was also another movement uh, from France called Ressourcement, which desired a return to biblical standards. Pioneered by Dominican Ives Conga, a Jesuit Henry de Lubac, and Jean Daniolo, who wrote Sources Critines, 1942, to analyze early church authors. Conga spent five years as a prisoner of war in Germany, but despite this, he advocated for humanism and emphasized practical ministry, while Lubac was part of the French resistance against the fascists. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin combined body soul dualism with theology, stating that spiritual energy makes matter important and becomes greatly more complex in the person of Christ. He wrote The Phenomenon of Man, which was denied permission to be printed and only published when he died in 1955. Pius XII responds through his encyclical Humani Generis on the 12th of August 1950. He creates a straw man of the new theology as being an attack against Christianity and then re-emphasize the authority of the magisterium in pronouncing doctrine and theology. It also condemns historicism as an attack on dogma and Pius XII condemns evolution, polygenism or the idea that the human race isn't descended from Adam and Eve and emantism which neglects immutable essences. This caused Lubeck, Conga and others to be shunned and they lost their teaching positions. Immobilissimo, the Roman Curia was ineffective in 1950. Riccardo Lombardi, the founder of the Better World Movement, called for the church to reform in a report. The heads in the Curia rejected the reforms and ideas of de-Italianizing careerism, reorganizing seminaries, changing diocese boundaries and ecumenism. Despite this, Pius XII internationalized and expanded the College of Cardinals, pontificating on everything. Acta Apostolicae Cetus, 1940 to 1958. These are volumes that address every organized calling before he died. Among the last were bookstore keepers, beekeepers, and plastic surgeons, Douglas Woodruff. Woodruff also stated that he was the first Pope on TV, and thus the Pope became Catholicism personified. Death of Pius XII. On the 9th of October, 1958, Pius XII was retreating more from life. He suffered from confusion, apparitions, hallucinations, and sickness, and he died. So yeah, we looked at Pius XII, his reign, the impacts of his reign on the time, the new theology, and yeah, join me next video whereby I talk about Pope John the 23rd, who initiated much needed reform in the church and started the Second Vatican Council. Thanks for watching.